your character has such a rich history, the character it's based on, the person. Anna Mae Wong was the first Chinese-American film star in Hollywood, which is just such a big feat. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to know how it felt for you to bring that role to the screen. Well, initially it was presented to me as Anna Mae Wong. And of course, when it said Anna Mae Wong and Damien Chazelle in one email, I just kind of blacked out for a second. And then I came to and I said, I have to have this. So a lot of research was done uh, from you know, reading her biography. And and surprisingly, three years ago, there weren't even as much talk about her or information out there on her. Um, and I, you know, watched a lot of her films to just get to know her a little bit better. And then after I was cast, Damien uh, rang and said that um, it is a fictional character loosely based on her. So in a sense, I was a little bit relieved that there wasn't that pressure to get it accurate and it was exciting to have uh, I guess a little bit of creative freedom because as you know from the film that she's also a title card reader uh, writer excuse me a title card writer as well as you know a performer which um Anna Mae Wong was but in different ways absolutely and I mean she is such a powerhouse both Anna Mae Wong and your character that you bring to life I mean, I love the rattlesnake scene. Like, I, she is my icon for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I love the chemistry that she brings with Margot's character, Nelly, which I wanted to dive into because even with the rattlesnake scene, you know, there's such, like, power between those two. So could you just dive into what that was like in bringing that to life? I think um, when I first read it on this in the script, I just thought, did I just read that right? And um, I love it. I just loved how how unique it was. I I keep asking Damien to this day, how did you even come up with this idea that, you know, she gets bitten and I had the, 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 the balls to go up there and rip that snake up. So, um, it was just a really, um, wild experience. I don't think I'll ever be able to experience again. (laughs) And there's this aspect of bringing this LGBTQ representation of Hollywood that we don't get to see as much and, you know, bringing it from the 20s and then looking at it in modern day. I mean, how was it exploring that with this character? And do you have any like parallels that you see between the then and the now? Um, Yes, I I feel like, you know, uh, a lot of actors back then had to hide who they really were in order to um, be successful um, in the industry. And I still think it exists these days. I think people are still afraid that it will impact their uh, careers somehow. Um, But I, I just what I love about my character is that she is fearless. She's already gone through so much. She doesn't care what anyone thinks and she's just going to go after exactly what she wants. Absolutely. And just real quick at the end, I mean, there's so much chaos, there's so much that goes on, but do you have a takeaway that you hope audiences really see from seeing this? I've been saying this, I really hope that this film inspires people to go to a movie theater and, and watch a film and appreciate filmmaking for what it really is. I mean, we have the convenience of streaming and we have obviously from the pandemic, but now that we are recovering slowly, um, I hope that um, it opens up um, motivation for us to get up and go out there and see it in the theaters. And I was even saying when I spoke with Margo, I feel like there's just this want to stay in your seat after the film. Like you don't want to leave the experience, even though you've gone through so many emotions. I mean, (laughs) you just want to stay because you're like, I don't want to leave the world of it, but it still exists, you know, today. So it's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you for chatting with me. Thank you.